So we're back to the mega test now, and as you can see, we've got John and hello, uh, hello. and we've got uh, or Doctor Doctor Hog rather. Well, yes, I uh, keep in character. That'd be better. Yes, indeed. <laughs> um, and we have been working away in this clean air cupboard, which looks like a fume cupboard, and we've just used some clever red tape from Carpro, as that happens, to uh, create lots of little sections. So we have 25 waxes, um, and we have created four little tests for each one. Um, and there is a quick word we have on a new wax that we put into the test. Yes. Essentially, we had a uh, fireball in there previously. Um, I might have lent our test wax out and it might never have returned. And then I looked to see if we could get some more and you couldn't get anywhere. So I thought, what's the point in testing a wax that you can't no. currently get hold of? So what I did do is introduce a new bee. We haven't done the gloss testing, the bee testing on it yet. Um, but Colonite 476S. Uh, has been around for yonks, as you can tell from the branding. It's forever. It is, it's forever. Um, and a lot of the PVD guys use this as a winter protection wax because it's cost effective and it lasts well and it goes on easily. Um, and it's really not expensive. I believe it's well under 20 quid for a pot this yep. size. Um, how many cars would you get out of that? 30, well, 40? Nah, easily 30. Easily 30 cars. So it's a, it's a good value wax. Um, so, um, as I say, we're going to put them on here and you might see that this is stainless steel, but it doesn't matter because the test we're doing here is how they react to different substances of uh, pHs. pHs that they would normally find in the real world. Exactly. So, John, talk us through what we're going to do. First of all, we're going to hit the uh, bird lime equivalent. Yes, we've got some organic acid which will be equivalent to what you would get pH-wise in bird lime. And that's going to sit at around about pH two and a half, so that will give us a good indication of how the bird line behaves on all the waxes. And this is an interesting point because there was an article released recently yes. where it said that uh, the wax has, or any paint protection, has no effect on the bird line or rather on the protection the, of bird the, line. the actual penetration through the film. Um, because the, it's actually the heat of the bird mess that expands and contracts the lacquer um, that creates the yeah. mark, the etching the, mark. The H mark is actually effectively the lacquer wrapping around, around the, the bird, bird line. Mark. So, um, however, in the past, uh, the orthodox has always been it's the acid that's etching away the lacquer. Mm -hmm. And we don't know the answer until no. we've done some testing. We'll try the test and see how it goes. So that'll be fun. And then we're going to up the, uh, up the odds, go more acid, but this time with a mineral acid as opposed to an organic acid. And this mm -hmm. is to simulate... Essentially have a go at simulating acid rain. In acid rain you get two or three different types of acid. You get carbonic acid, but you also get nitric because of the lightning going through the sky, reacts with NO2, and you can get nitric acid. So we're having a go at that. So we have a go at that one. And then we go into the alkaline scale, and the first thing is uh, foam, and the second thing is TFR. Now there's an interesting point here, because they are both 14 pH 14, which is strong alkali, you don't want to drink it. Nope. But, as John will allude to, there's a subtle difference. The concentrations of the alkaline material are completely different. The foam being at approximately 2% and the TFR being four times it being 8%. So it will be interesting to see, and these are going to begin on neat, not diluted, to see precisely what it does to the, the wax films. And this is the whole point of this is that it's a real world test. So, um, you know, in the real world, people do use TFR, and, and unfortunately, in some places, they use it at incorrect dilutions because yes. it's a very quick way of cleaning a car, but it can dull things. Um, so, we're going to illustrate, you know, how well a wax can protect against that. And then the foam is, I mean, the, the, your foam product, that's a, essentially a snow foam? It's a snow foam, it's a sticky foam. And uh, is that what you call a pH neutral snow foam? No. So, okay, so this is, no. this is an aggressive snow foam. I'm, yeah. I suppose it's a the the differentiator is pH neutral foams tend not to clean overly well. You need a wee bit of alkalinity there to saponify the dirt that's on the car. Gotcha. And that's how you get a touchless wash. I see what you mean. So we've got all these tests and we are bringing in um, Paul Ewing uh, of Dirty Cars here in Glasgow area, yes. um, although technically we're in Renfrew. We're we in Renfrew, Renfrew, but it's near Glasgow, it's close near Glasgow, it'll do. Yeah. Um, and uh, Paul knows his chicken, so he's going to be putting on the wax properly um, and fairly. He's not associated with any particular brands or no. paid by anybody. He is um, objective. So uh, we'll be putting on each of the waxes that we've got and then we'll be spot testing. How does spot testing work? We will just literally spot test. We will take a measured drop of each of the chemicals, spot them on the waxes, lay them for the same time, pad them off and see if they've affected the film. Gotcha. So what we're going to be doing is exactly as John said, with the help of Paul, and furthermore to that, we're then going to be putting all that data 
mm -hmm. um, into the next edition of the magazine, uh, which will be issue six coming out yep. in December. Um, so if you're seeing this after December, it will be in a magazine you're able to get. And furthermore, we're also going to do a solids test. We are going to do a solids test, and that will tell us approximately how much active constituents are in each of the waxes, which basically means we will flash off the solvent and what is left is what's left on your car. And we'll be able to tally that to the gloss readings and all the other tests that were in the previous issue. And what's interesting about this is we're not able to say at this time whether a high level of dissolved solids is good or bad, no. or if in fact there's no correlation whatsoever, as in waxes that are able to give really high gloss, uh, maybe there's one with really high solids and one with really low solids. Yeah. So I suspect this hasn't been done before. So as a result, we don't have anything to go by. No, so this is pioneering stuff. No idea. Brilliant. Okay, well, let's crack on. No problem. So at this stage what we're going to do, we've left it for about 15 minutes or so, we've done the swipe test, everything's cured properly and now we're going to buff everything off before we carry out our further tests. So now we're literally just putting a single spot. drop or a couple of drops? Single spot. Single spot. And this is the no, equivalent of bird line. And John, in terms of how long the spot will sit on there, does it? Are we going to try and aim for something? Specific we'll aim or? for five, five, ten minutes. Okay. Like so in a, in a real world environment, we always say with bird limes is you've got to act quickly because the longer they're on there, the more damage they will do. And I think that stands regardless of whether the damage is a result of the heat or of the acidity. Um, and again, when it comes to remo removing bird lime, there is a very specific procedure to follow which will help you remove it safely. Whatever you do, do not go and find a Brillo pad and have a scrub because you will do untold damage uh, to your lacquer and top coat and sometimes it can't even be repaired with machine polishing. It will be miserable. Yes, it will be a bad day. So we'll now do the foam, which right. is the alkaline one. We've done the test and we have, as you saw, put the drops of each of the uh, different solutions onto the waxes. And what we did was move the waxes around so the lower half of each of these squares has had the solution um, moved over it and then dried off. And then we've simply sprayed some water over the top to see whether the beading behaviour is different. And therefore we can tell, not necessarily the wax has been removed, but how much they've been affected by it. So here's the control, and as you can see on the control it's fairly even beading all over the place. With the Supernatural Hybrid the beading is pretty much reduced, so it suggests that that has been affected by the strongest acid solution. Angel Wax Enigma, uh, rather embarrassingly given where we are, has also been affected by it. Um, the Fusso, again, you can tell at the top there is still beading, at the bottom it's sheeting, which again suggests that that's been affected. Um, Maguire's Ultimate, again maybe less so, um, Soft 99, the King of Gloss, has done very well. It's had absolutely no impact on the beading. That's consistent across. Uh, the Bouncer's uh, Sherbet Fizz, again, there is a little bit of difference, but it's resisted pretty well. The um, Ayrshire Paste Wax by Auto Perfect has been um, pretty detrimentally affected by the strong acid, um, as has the Vintage Wax. So that did really well in the gloss, but in terms of resisting strong acid, it's not done particularly brilliantly. Uh, the dub wax again has been pretty much affected. You can tell the top nice clean beading, lower down less so. The finish care, uh, which is the high temp paste wax, the sealant, again that has been affected. Um, as has the CSP, although CSP there is still some resistance going on there, but it is much clearer beading at the top. Swiss Fact Shield has done well. That is consistent across the whole lot. Um, we don't know how much is going to come out nicely on video, but there is a big difference there. Uh, again. Autoglim HD Wax has done really well as well, there's consistent beading. Uh, Monsoon, uh, which is the lesser of the two uh, Powermax waxes, again that has been slightly affected, um, as has Autoglans. Um, the Brightmax Vantage, again it's been affected, but it's not as bad as some of them. Um, then we get onto the Oblivion Wax, and again that's done fairly well. 
Um, the particular ones that have shown up some real resistance is this one's Pete's 53 and this one has done very well even though everybody was thinking that's more of a show wax actually it's resisted nicely Tsunami again has done really really well in this R222 again not as well you can tell the beading's nice and clear and at the top at the bottom it's centre sheeting uh, the Blue Velvet which is quite an old school organic wax again one wouldn't necessarily expect that to be uh, cutting edge and it has suffered somewhat um, the um, Auto Finesse Fusion has um, suffered as we can see in the film there um, ODK Concourse again it's done pretty well that really is a show wax and yes it has been affected but again it's not as bad as some of them uh, the eye wax has been affected as well um, and the colonite as well has all but disappeared with the uh, introduction of the acid what we're going to do now these panels have all been dried and you can tell just in the film that there is potentially some sort of gloss difference but we're going to spray some water across and uh, see whether we're getting the same sort of effects on those so we're now doing the rest of the panels and we're squirting water on which is what that noise you can hear in the background is so bear in mind this next row this is the second row up is the stronger acid so there might be some products that survive uh, the lesser acid at the bottom but not the stronger acid equally because one's organic and one is mineral there might be sort of chemistry reasons why they don't survive so if we look at the control here the control uh, is pretty consistent the next one along is supernatural hybrid nano and John's just behind me. I'm going to ask him to tell me what the name of the next one along is so that I don't have to keep moving the camera. <laughs> it's the Enigma. Uh, so this is Enigma. So that has been... That's a consistent finish, I would say, there. Um, the next one along is... Uh, Soft 99. Soft 99. So again, you can see the beading has been affected. There is still some beading there, um, but it's definitely been affected by the wax. Maguire's Ultimate. Maguire's Ultimate has been pretty much wiped out by the strong acid, as you can tell. Nice beading along the top, nothing at the bottom. And King of Gloss. King of Gloss, so this is uh, the Fusso Gloss Enhancer. Again, that's been badly affected. And Bouncer's Sherbet Fizz. Bouncer's Sherbet Fizz has done very well. Um, there's consistent uh, beading there. Auto Perfect. Auto Perfect. Again, you'll notice that's done very well. Um, the, there's a big glob in the middle at the lower end of both of these ones, and that's where the main blob of the wax was. So that's where the effect is greatest. Um, but even then, you'll see it's still kind of resisting it. Uh, Scholl Vantage. So Scholl Vantage was the really good glossy one. Um, and again, we can see there is some detrimental results at the bottom, but it's still kind of just about holding in there. And dub wax? Dub wax, um, to our surprise, has done really, really well on this. We didn't think it would be necessarily particularly resilient, but it's actually got pretty consistent um, beading there. Bear in mind that these different products beaded slightly differently in the first place. Um, so we're really looking about in context of the beading within a panel. So this next one is... The Finish Care High Temp. So this is Finish Care uh, 1000P or KP, I seem to remember. That's the one, yeah. So that's the one, and that's done all right. Um, next one's done really well. CSP. CSP, uh, detailing system. This one, yeah, we can see some detrimental effect. What's that's it? the Swiss Fact Shield. Swiss Fact Shield. So Swiss Fact Shield did very well with the organic wax, with the mineral, uh, with the organic um, acid, but with the mineral acid, it's been less resilient. The next one along is... That is Autoglim HD. Autoglim HD. And again, Autoglim HD did really, really well with the organic, um, but with the mineral, it's done less well. And then we're on to Autoglim, uh, the Monsoon. Monsoon. So again, Monsoon was affected um, by the organic, uh, though not as badly as some. Here it has also been affected, but it's really not that bad. It's kept, kept going pretty well. Then the Autoglim Sierra. Uh, so auto glands here, that has been affected. Again, there is still some sign of beading going on there, um, comparing those two. Then we're on the Bright Max Vantage. Bright Max Vantage, that's pretty good going. Um, and again, it has been slightly affected, but there is still some sign of protection going on there. As we say, there is the beading is not a guarantee of protection. Equally, the lack of beading is not the guarantee of no protection. The Wax Planet Oblivion. Um, <laughs> And that one has done pretty well. In the centre, you can tell it's been affected, but uh, bear in mind that's where the drop was for a long time. So, um, yeah, there is certainly some resistance there, and it's done well on the other as well. Uh, Pete's 53. Pete's 53. So, again, this is one we thought was kind of more show wax, but actually it's done really, really well with the organic and with the mineral. It's done just as well, if not better. Um, tsunami. So this is Powermax Tsunami, and this is, again, showing up really, really well. Look at that. It's consistent across both mineral and organic acids. R222. R222. Now, this is interesting. This definitely is a show wax, um, but it's done really, really well in this. I mean, it's not as good as, say, Tsunami. There's definitely a difference at the bottom to the top, um, but it's been fairly resistant to the mineral wax, for sure. And then we're on to Dodo Juice Blue Velvet. Blue Velvet. So this is not a brand new wax, by any means. It's kind of old school tech. It was affected by organic, um, but it's proved more resilient to the mineral wax. 
And then we're on to auto finesse, auto finesse fusion. Auto finesse fusion. So there on the uh, organic, it, it disappeared with the organic acid. However, with the mineral acid, it's done rather better. There's very, very slight signs. It's different top to bottom, but that's fairly minimal. And then we've got the ODK. ODK concourse, which is a show wax. And again, it has been affected. Um, you can tell there is a difference there. Um, I'd say it's done pretty well against organic, less well against the mineral. And we're on to wax planet. Which wax planet wax. is this one? This is eye wax, so this is another hybrid wax. And again, the mineral, it would I would suggest that the mineral wax has pretty much destroyed it. I mean, the mineral acid. Um, uh, but again, on the organic side, that as well has, has affected. So the eye wax is, is not proving as durable in the acid element. We'll see what it does in the alkaline shortly. And that's colonite 476. So colonite 476, that kind of old school wax uh, that lots of people approve of and it works really well, has actually proven here that it is very vulnerable to both mineral and organic acids. So now let's have a look at what they do on the alkaline scale. So we're back now and we have been doing the test and as we've shown on the acid side there's been a real difference in a lot of the results. So some products have resisted the uh, mineral acids quite well, others have resisted the organic acids quite That's well correct, yeah. and some have uh, resisted both pretty well. On the acid scale which do you feel has, has impressed the most? The best one I would say, remember the Tsunami? Tsunami's done very well. Shield? And Swiss Fact Shield did very well as well. Mm -hmm. And what's interesting with Shield, it's designed to be that's a PTFE wax, isn't it? So that's designed to be resilient. Um, and then equally, Tsunami is designed to be their, like their top end wax. Yeah. Um, and then on other scales, there's things like Shoal Vintage did really well on the, um, uh, the mineral acid, um, but really not so well on, on the, the organic. organic. Which is it's interesting. Kind of unusual. Yeah, it is. It's an interesting thing, and it's it's all chemistry, which isn't really my zone. No, not but, not mine. <laughs> but we've had a bit of a disaster, and we were doing, as you know, the alkaline test. So we had the foam and the TFR, yeah. and the problem is both of those products and their reaction with water. You can't dry them very easily because they are foamy. I mean, they're foamy. They're full. TFRs foams full of surfactant, water susceptible, designed to be rinsed off and not wiped off. So we had a problem drying the panel, essentially, which has led us to a situation where we have half the panel beating like there's no tomorrow, but the other half, because it's still got surfactant, flat and wet. And sheeting. And so while, uh, also equally to, to get more off, we'd have to do vigorous rubbing, and then therefore it's a test of abrasion rather yeah, than anything else, not, which is not it's consistent. It's not a fair test, it's not yeah. consistent. So we've decided to ditch that part because if we can't do it fairly and can't be fair to no. the different waxes, there is no point in doing it at all. And while, you know, in terms of precision and accuracy and stuff, we've, we've, we've done fairly pretty, well. Pretty precise. Pretty precise in the areas that matter. So again, some people will say, why don't you do it on a painted panel? Well, the answer is we're testing the product itself, not its adhesion necessarily. No. It's a surface test. It's a surface test. So um, I think the results are, are fascinating, to be honest. And we're going to be getting full data sheet through. And in the um, magazine, we'll write everything yeah. up and actually give a kind of a better assumption. And John's very kindly said he'll take some photos of each one. Um, Justin Dyer, because John turns out is actually also a photographer. Oh, as well. yeah, so you know, keen, stuff. keen. Yes, indeed. <laughs> um, so we're going to put those in the mag, but, but for now, in terms of resilience and in terms of picking a winner of the wax mega test ultimately, I'm, uh, personally, I've given the gloss side, and because John's read obviously the gloss review that we did mm -hmm. down at Autoglim. I'm, I'm edging towards Tsunami. I know Vintage was better in terms of gloss, but in protection, Tsunami's done really well. Tsunami's done well. Yeah. Is it, and, and again, what would, what would be your kind of angle to? I mean, I don't want to say this is definitely better than that, and that's <laughs> definitely better than the other, because I'd it's say subjective. you're looking at 25 good waxes. Yes. Uh, all of which are going to be good value and would be a disappointment to the user. And it's really, it's hard to pick up a winner, so to speak. Mm. But I mean, yeah, there's some some good ones. Tsunami's good wax, Shield's good, Dog wax has come out. Mm. It's come out well for a off the off the wall sure, one. Yeah. And Dubwax is a, is a surprise, you know. Yeah. If you look at the the budgets of all the other mm -hmm. ones, Dubwax is a small small organisation, and and to come up with a wax that is competing side by side with big organisations is quite something. But I think it's really important yeah. to say how subjective waxes are because are. you know in in terms of their. Uh, application, the type of gloss that they give, the warmth, that is a very subjective thing and more or less impossible to measure. Um, and we did, uh, with John Deleu's help, we did go through a lot of the usability stakes on, on the different waxes, so we've got an idea on that. And then on a scientific level, it might be the most glossy, but we're talking nths of a degree. Yeah. Um, so really, it's down to personal favour, but the answer is you won't go wrong with any of these. Um, but in terms of what I'd put on my own personal car, 
I would be tempted, and bear in mind that I'm normally a, a Dodo Juice fan personally. I like the old school organic ones just because it gets me an excuse to do something quite regularly. Um, I really like the CSP. I really like the Tsunami. That's good. And Soft Night and King of Gloss did well. King of Gloss as well. And King Gloss, you know, we were pretty critical of it in the Gloss side because actually Fusso on its own did pretty much the same yeah. job. And, and King Gloss was supposed to be on top of it. Um, and we thought, well, kind of, what's the point? It's, you know, it's good value. That's certainly going for it. Um, but actually, in the resilience test, King Gloss has come good and shown why it's, there's a point to it. Well. Um, and again, the Supernatural Hybrid Nano was a bit of a disappointment in the Gloss stakes. That's done well against Mineral Acid. Um, yeah. So yeah, it's an interesting test and it's an interesting thing. Um, but we're not going to say, definitely buy this wax and definitely don't buy that wax no. because it would be wrong buy, to do so. Buy any of them because they're good quality waxes. Exactly. End of. So the only thing remaining is the uh, solids test, residual solids, solids which test, is more which kind of a muse. It's an interesting thing to know how much it is will that. prove interesting. So now we have moved into a different lab, different laboratory, yeah. which is still uh, in the angel wax territory, but this one is where you deal with things like in inks. And yeah, stuff printing like inks, surface coatings, varnishes, lacquers. We do all the work that's required for them in here. I see, so it's a, it's a second lab. Yeah. And we are doing here a test for the kind of retained solids of a Yeah, wax. essentially, it's a solids test. What this will do is it will tell us the active amount of wax polymer that is actually going on the can. Gotcha. Okay, okay, okay. And what's the process? The process is quite straightforward. We have a tray, which we stick the scale. We then write down the weight, which in this case is 2.25 grams. We then take some wax, put that on. Which is then put it up to 2.84 grams. We will then put that in an oven, which will be about 115 degrees. At that temperature, the solvents that are in the waxes, what sort of solvents? Kerosene, limonene, aliphatics, aromatics, mm -hmm. they will all come off and we'll be left with the waxes potentially some of the fragrances but basically what goes on the car will be left mm -hmm. and that will give us a very interesting potential correlation between gloss levels and wax content and so the, the retained solids will be expressed as a percentage as a percentage yes a percentage of that thing. so for example enigma or any of the other ones will be at the time we'll say yeah that was 30 percent retained solids or 40 percent retained solids 60 percent Cool, and then we will cross-reference those results with gloss. And what we might mm -hmm. find, uh, as I think we mentioned before, is that uh, there could be a thing that the ones with the higher solids give better gloss in general, or that lower solids give better gloss, gloss, or actually that there's no correlation at all between retained solids and the level of gloss or bead angle and all the rest yeah. of it. So, so this is pretty unique. This, I yeah. don't think this has been done over such a range of waxes. Cool. Well, let's get going and see how it rolls. No problem. Uh, so now John has measured out yeah. three samples. The reason we do three for each wax is because it increases accuracy by repeating it. By repeating it, we get um, an average. And uh, a question I've just asked, which is a bit dumb, is um, how do we know which sample is which? And the answer is that he has put numbers on the bottom. So that makes sense. So John, uh, this is your special oven. Yes, my analytical oven. 115 degrees, plus or minus a couple. I can feel the heat off here already. Yes. Right? And you can smell the Brady's. <laughs> Basically, these just get put in. Just a health and safety note, if you're using an oven, obviously, I mean, John's arms are asbestos, but if yours aren't, use an oven glove, an appropriate safety material, yeah. if you want to keep your digits. Digits, yeah. Well, well, yeah. Close that, and we'll give that about an hour, hour and 15 minutes. At 115 degrees. At 115 degrees, yeah. And are we expecting the wax to look all kind of bubbled down? and The wax will be liquid. When we take it out, mm -hmm. but as soon as the temperature cools, it'll, secure. it'll solid up again. So we're back after an hour, and we've managed to find a new lens, so hopefully you can see a bit more than you could before. <laughs> um, and um, we're about to open up, and inside we have liquid wax. This time we're using the Enigma as the first one, um, just so that we can kind of find our bearings, and also because uh, Mr. Hogg, Dr. Hogg, remembers 
uh, knows what what sort of figure he's looking for. So we're trying yes. to work out. We're aiming for a figure. Do you say thirty eight and a half? Around percent? about 38 and a half percent. Thirty eight and a half percent. So if our methodology is correct, we should get a reading when we do the math of about thirty eight, thirty nine percent. Yeah, that would be expected. Right. So we've now taken the the wax from the oven. We're back in the lab. We've got our accurate scale. If you remember before, we had numbered the inserts so we knew which particular one we're dealing with. So after an hour, sample number one weighs 2.47 grams. And take that one off. We'll do sample number two. That weighs 2.61 grams. So now having these actually weighed out, we'll do the maths. And just for accuracy, we'll do it in a calculator. <laughs> so, which was the full weight minus the weight of the insert. So we started off with 0.59 grams of wax. After an hour, we have 0.22 grams of wax left. And then to convert that to a percentage, divide that by what you had, it comes down to about 37.3%. And then the really exciting bit is we do it again. John, brilliant stuff. Yep. We've got some interesting readings there. Um, all that remains now are for the other 24 waxes to be processed through. Yes. Um, so that's going to be an interesting task. What I've noticed is it's, it's getting quite late and I've got 400 miles or so to drive home. But you did say you were going to help me. Oh yeah, yeah. No, I'll, I'll help you in, in, in spirit. Ah, so you're just going to abandon me? I'm not abandoning you. We'll be back soon. We'll be okay. back soon. Okay, okay, okay. But um, I'm sure that'll be all right. And it has been brilliant um, being That's here at Wax. No problem. Lots of fun and learnt so many things, which is what it's all about really yes. at the end of the time. Um, and I'm really looking forward to some data sets and stuff. From yes, it'll be good. Yeah, you'll be able to yeah. see them when you're here, obviously, help me do the job. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and it's just we've got two weeks until print deadline so I need to go and you know start yeah yeah pressing okay, some buttons. So we'll and um and then that'll be good and no problem. Uh, yeah we should go and say our goodbyes to the various other folk around yeah okay <laughs> and let's see how this goes no bother all but right you're, but you're you are supposed to be helping me you are staying yeah no I I, I, I no, will no, but, but you are staying there yeah yeah no I'm staying you definitely stay I, I definitely staying definitely yeah. staying yeah. I, what, I just need to go to the loo that's what okay, it is okay, that's okay, cool well, don't all right. too long. run 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 now Thank you very much for watching this episode. I hope you enjoyed our trip up to Angel Wax and the mega test results and wax brewing. If you'd like to see more of our videos, you can subscribe here and you can browse our other videos here.